This is Pam from NortheastWheelsEvents.com. You like the switch of the voice? Pretty cool. <laughs> we are going to take a uh, look at what's under the hood uh, of a Stanley steamer. Yes, a steam car with a great volunteer, Kelly. And we are at, what's the museum? This is the Marshall Museum of Stanley Steam Cars. Very good. And where in Delaware? Uh, Yorkland, Delaware. Yorkland, Delaware. Now, that's a short Castle. hop. Yep. <laughs> That's a short hop from Philadelphia, an uh, hour and a half from um, Harrisburg, a short hop from Hershey and Lancaster. So we have to put this on our bucket list because how many Stanleys do you have here? We have 14 operating Stanleys here. This is the largest collection of operating Stanleys in existence. Now that is definitely a bucket list. Now you're going to show us how a Stanley actually works. Yeah, we have a nice uh, demonstrator here kind of taken apart, but it, uh, with uh, most of the primary components mm -hmm. of the car. Uh, there is a boiler in the front here, which is just kind of a cylinder uh, with water in it. Uh, in, in order to make a steam power plant that was compact enough uh, that it could, that would have the power to run a car but not be too heavy, right. uh, the Stanleys came up with a very clever design. Uh, small unit, they used high pressure, four to 600 PSI, you know, much higher than locomotives. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, they wound the outside of the boiler with three layers of piano wire. Mm -hmm. So uh, tremendous tensile strength on the outside here. Mm -hmm. uh, the, in the other direction, in this direction, it's filled with flues uh, that allow the heat to come through and heat up the water. Mm -hmm. uh, and these flues are uh, expanded on the top and the bottom. Well, all those flues act like stables to hold the boiler oh, okay. together in this direction. Mm -hmm. Very, very strong construction and lightweight. There's never been an, uh, an instance of these boilers exploding. Now, I heard that uh, to prove this out, they dug a hole and ran up to a few thousand PSI and it still didn't blow? What, hap what ends up happening, these tubes are copper. Mm -hmm. And when the pressure gets that high, they're too soft. They can't withstand it anymore. And they, they, they start to collapse and the ends of these start to distort. And then the steam pressure just start, sort of leaks out. Oh, and that's it, great. And it can't now, I'm going to take a look from underneath. It's the same thing going in. All right, so there's the flues going back. Now, those flues are just nothing but air just too heated. Right. Okay, very good. Now, where does the water come in and circulate around the boiler? Uh, you can't see that uh, in this uh, 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 model, mm -hmm. but uh, these are the water pumps. Okay. And uh, the, outlet, the outlets of these water pumps are going to be uh, piped to the boiler. Oh, to, okay replenish it from the supply tank as mm -hmm. water's being used for steam. Now, uh, let's get back to steam. You've got uh, to heat now. This would be the uh, hot air coming up through here. Uh, is that just vented off to the it atmosphere? It is. Kind of, there's kind of a bonnet over the top and a flue that runs through the back of the car. Okay, so we have hot exhaust coming out from that. We're heated up from down here in this heating tray. Right. This is a burner. This is a vaporizing burner, another very clever uh, uh, device, not really invented by the Stanleys, but super simple. There are no moving parts. Mm -hmm. the, uh, um, the, the fuel gets pumped in under pressure, and it comes through these tubes, which are right over the fire. So the fire itself essentially boils the liquid fuel, turns mm -hmm. it into a vapor, and then that vapor gets shot into these mixing tubes, mm -hmm. and it mixes with air, and that, that, that uh, flammable mixture then comes out through these slots, and, and this entire circle is a very hot fire. Wow. Tremendously hot. It's, um, you know, I don't know that. Oh, jeez, <laughs> Kelly, come on. But I do know that it's hot enough that if you don't have water in here mm -hmm. to be taking that heat, it will melt, it, well, it won't melt it, but it'll soften the steel and wow. it'll start to warp. And that's, that's a typical way that these boilers are ruined in modern times is okay. people let the water level drop, they don't manage their water correctly, right? Uh, and, the, and the fire. Damage. Now, you're, uh, we're saying because you have one uh, motor in here we're checking out uh, was ruined because of lack of oil. Now, mm -hmm. the oil is piped through at this point? Uh, no, the... Uh, or am I the, jumping ahead too far? A little far? bit, but okay. not, not very. Um, steam comes out the top of this and to the throttle, mm -hmm. um, and uh, the oil ends up getting injected like right about here. Or something. Oh, okay, very good. And it travels back with the steam um, into the engine. Correct. Uh, you can see because we have this nice mirror here. You can see the valves; they're orange there. Mm -hmm. um, very good. As the <clears throat> as 
the engine moves, you can sort of see that they are oscillating back and forth. And they are, they are moving uh, between positions of... <laughs> Let's see if I get it without getting the phone in there. They're moving there between positions of admitting steam to uh -huh. each end of the cylinder. And exhausting steam. Let's see this. Can we get in there? Yes, we can. Oh, I'm so good. Just like a slide valve. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Very simple. This is these, these, this was an obsolete form of engine when they started using it. Uh huh. Uh, lo uh, steam locomotives on railroads had long since gone to piston valves. Right. Uh, more efficient, more uh, uh, better for servicing. Now this, this is a single. compound, though. No, no. This no, is this a, is a uh, single. Right. Okay. Very uh, good. Double acting. Simple. Anyway. Okay, double acting because you've got steam going in, steam going, uh, pushing right. down, and pushing back on the cylinders. You have a two cylinder. The piston is actually in there, so you get steam coming up and steam going down from over right. there. Connecting rod going down to your um, crank, actually, uh, which goes back to your mm -hmm. diff. So this is this. These two are in constant mesh. Mm -hmm. No transmission, no clutch, mm -hmm. nothing. Um, you control the speed of the engine by opening the throttle and putting right. more steam in. What that means though is that you can't put the car in reverse, right? Um, oh, interesting. You would have to reverse so your exactly, steam flow. Exactly, exactly. What you got is this, and if you look at those valves again, right? when I pull this back here, it changes the relationship of the ah. valves to the pistons, and then the engine starts running backwards. Gotcha. Like, like you just said, and then the car goes backwards. Uh, which theoretically means it could go backwards as fast Just as it as could fast. go forward. Yes. Uh, but it's scary enough going backwards slowly, let alone... Oh, I'm speed. sure. <laughs> this is really good. Okay, now, let's get into this. Uh, only 13 moving parts, 37 total moving parts, typical Stanley automobile, which is really pretty cool. But, uh, now, how much water and how much fuel and what fuel did it use? Well... This car used gasoline for fuel. Mm -hmm. uh, Stanley's used gasoline up until about 1913. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> but uh, gasoline was expensive and it's kind of scary because you have that fuel in there under pressure in order to make this burner work right. right. Things go wrong, then you've got gasoline at 100 psi squirting out. You know, it's um, at about that time, <clears throat> about 1912, 13, kerosene was becoming much less expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, it has a real high energy density mm -hmm. um, and it's not quite so dangerous. Mm -hmm. So they redesigned their burner to burn mm -hmm. kerosene at that point. Very good. Um, and <clears throat> the, the burner has a little pilot in it like a, like an old water heater did or a stove or something. Right. Um, because uh, one of the nice things about this power plant compared to a locomotive power plant is that when you get to the pressure, to the desired pressure, you can turn off the fire. Can't mm -hmm. do that in a locomotive because you got this giant bed of burning coals. Yes. Um, but here's a here's a, a liquid fueled burner, and you have that kind of control. Well, that means that you have to be able to relight the burner when you need more pressure. So that little pilot is in there burning all the time. Oh, okay. And when you open the <clears throat> main fuel valve and let fuel in, it relights it. It kicks it in. <laughs> but what kind? Of, um, now the mileage. I remember the fuel mileage for well the water mileage because we have two fluids to worry about water mileage. And fuel mileage, uh, the water mileage was just a few it's, miles per gallon of say water. About one mile to the gallon, yeah, on mm -hmm. the non-condensing cars. Mm -hmm. Which was not a problem back then, especially because of all the water troughs for the horses. Right. Uh, the fuel got... Fuel, we, we sort of generally say about 10 miles a gallon. 10 miles per gallon, because that you would go by more by the hour? Uh, or kind not really, of. kind of, okay. Yeah. Um, it's not a very efficient uh, power plant. A lot of people say, well, I don't know why we're not doing steam cars now. Well, that's one of the reasons. Mm -hmm. um, there's an awful lot of places throughout here for heat to be lost. Mm -hmm. You know, you paid for the heat here and you're yes. throwing it away yes. along all these pipes and uh, you're, you're, you're using it inefficiently in the antique slide valve engine. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not, uh, not super efficient. That is, that is, and they're quite expensive, from what I understand. Stanley was not an inexpensive. Yeah. yeah, they were not an inexpensive. The advantage, of course, they had the power, but starting a Stanley takes about eh, 15 minutes to a half hour Yeah. from cold. Yeah, from, from stone cold it does. Yeah. Uh, 
And that was, you know, people will sort of say, well, but that was, you know, as, as long as you had the time to spend, it was kind of okay. You didn't need the strength to crank a car, which you mm -hmm. would have needed in the in the te in the early, the first decade of the 20th century. Um, but you know, and and people will say, wow, well, you know, self starter came along in 1912, electric starter, and that just kind of ruined the steam cars. But that's really it's kind of a red herring because by 1912. You know, there were hundreds of thousands of Model Ts out there yes. you know, with people starting them with a crank. Yes. And, and uh, you know, Stanley's never made more than 11,000 cars in the entire 26-year operating run of the company. So they were just this teensy little part of the car business. It really wasn't. In the very first couple of years, you know, before about 1904, um, before things were starting to settle out, mm -hmm. there was still, it was still unclear whether it was going to be steam or gas or electric. Yes. Uh, and there were lots and lots of steam cars on the road by then, mm -hmm. but it just didn't take long. Um, the uh, as, as clumsy as the early gas cars were to drive because you had to work the spark and the throttle and you had, mm -hmm. you had a transmission and clutch and all that stuff. Um, but the ability to uh, uh, deliver the power inside the machine mm -hmm. uh, rather than having this separate system of, uh, of uh, generating, uh, uh, creating energy here and using it back there. Right. Um, it just was, uh, it was so much easier for the gasoline car technology to advance rapidly, mm -hmm. and that's what happened. By 1905 or 6, it was already abundantly clear that steam was not going to be. The, uh, right. The power of choice. Well, look, when uh, Stanley sold out in, was that, 1899, and uh, Locomobile bought it out. Now, they had any arguments, but they split, and then they went back to internal combustion engine right. and sold the patents back to the back Stanley to the brothers. Yep. That, so. was, that, that was an interesting story. By 1904, uh, Locomobile wasn't making any more steam cars. Right. Um, uh, the Stanleys stayed out of the steam car business in 1899 and 1900 and part of 1901 and mm -hmm. that was all they were required to by the terms of the contract they had made yes and then they were right back making cars in 1902 which is what our little red one over here is very early uh, very good stanley manufacturer very good and they ran through 26 you were saying the last car with a stanley name on it was made in 1926 in allentown pennsylvania yes. which is really pretty freaky yeah. i love that that's going to be a road trip folks you're going to see it uh, also, on starting, I was down here a couple of years ago, and I took two videos in starting a Stanley. Check NortheastWheelsEvents.com for starting a Stanley. Check out the videos with that. This is pretty cool. Now, on starting the uh, Stanley, do you guys give classes here in STEAM? We do. Um, what happens is uh, we have a lot of volunteers who come and work on cars. We have two mm -hmm. work nights a week, Tuesday and Thursday nights. Very good. Um, everybody's always welcome to come anytime, whether you remember or not. Stop in and see us. We're, we're here uh, every one of those evenings during the week. About 7 o'clock, everybody's here. Um, when people come and they're interested and they spend time working on them and learning on them, then mm -hmm. eventually uh, they'll get an offer, would you like to learn to drive the cars? And then we have uh, several people who are instructors, including myself, um, that teach people how to fire up and, and drive. Oh, that's great. That it's a wonderful opportunity. Uh, nowadays, uh, these these cars are, are considered to, to be pretty valuable. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, it's it's a little bit of a, of a barrier for some people to get involved if, if you would need to buy your own car. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that you can come here, work on cars, learn about them without having to start out with that making that capital investment it's an amazing opportunity you just you're not going to find it anywhere else no no plus you're picking up and continuing a very very lost art One, which is yeah, great and a, and a wonderful tradition of this collection which has uh which started forming in 1940 uh -huh. uh, the very first car that mr marshall bought in 1940 is still it's right over there uh-huh um, which one is that that's the, the this first green one over here the model 76 very good. Uh, that was a car that Mr. Marshall sold new when he was a Stanley dealer. Oh, really? And in 1940, when he decided he was gonna, he was interested in, in playing around with Stanleys again, he started checking around his old customers to see if any of them still had the cars that he sold them, and he found that one. Ah, oh, that's great. Uh, and brought it back here, and it's been here ever since. Good. Um, it's it's great. That that great that is that is fantastic. Well, Mark Kelly, I appreciate it so very much. This is Pam from NortheastWheelsVents.com at the Marshall Steam Museum. 
uh, in where again? Yorktown? Yorkland. Yorkland, Delaware. I don't even know where I am. This is really bloody well insane. You gotta remember all this crazy stuff. You figure it out. I can't. This is Pam from NortheastWheelsEvents.com for more cool events like this. Make sure you check NortheastWheelsEvents.com, SoutheastWheelsEvents.com, UKWheelsEvents.com. And while you're there, post and share your events. I'll see you at the shows.